All right, so chapter two summary, just really quickly here. Um, we're talking about trigonometric ratios, all three. We started with tan, and then we went to sine and cos. So the memory mnemonic, or that little uh, substitutionary sort of memory thing that you want to remember is so, ka, toa. And that helps you remember which sides of the right triangle are associated with um, each ratio. So for example, so, reminds us that the sine of an angle A, so here in the diagram, here's angle A right here. The sine of an angle A is generated by finding out the ratio between the O, opposite, divided by H, hypotenuse. So the opposite divided by hypotenuse. In this case, this is 8 over 17, the sine of A. The cosine, ka, okay, of A is the adjacent side, which this is adjacent right here. This is opposite, and this is hypotenuse. And so the cosine is adjacent. That's 15 over hypotenuse 17. So this is 15 over 17. That's the ratio for cos of A here. And in this case, the toa, the tangent, is opposite over adjacent. That's 8 over 15. If you can simplify these ratios, you should. OK? So here we go. It gives you the tan over here, 8 over 15. Any questions? Okay. Um, the other part of this was determining the angle. So if you're given two sides and you need to determine an angle, for example, in the above, uh, in the above example right here, we have cos of A is 15 over 17. You see that? Cos of A is 15 over 17. Well, what we're reminded here is that we can use our inverse function of the trig function, so the cos to the negative 1, and that will be, um, you know, your, it'll be your second function and then your cos button. So that's the, up there, it's cos to the negative 1. And so you do cos to the negative 1 of the ratio. It's really easy. So if you have cos of A is 15 over 17, then A equals cos to the negative 1 of the ratio 15 over 17. That's easy to do in your calculator. You just punch it in. So let's see, turn that on, clear. Second function, cos 15 divided by 17, and that'll give you your answer. Now, you do have to make sure your calculator is in degrees, okay? Notice this is asking for degrees. That's the only unit of measurement for angles that you know about right now. Um, other, other measurements would be radians. That's the other big one. I'll teach you about that in grade 11 or 12, whatever that turns out to be. And, uh, but right now, you want to make sure your calculator is on degrees. If it's not on degrees, you'll get something like this. Okay, whoops, watch this. See, I can change my calculator to a different, uh, a different unit, and then watch what happens. If I put in the exact same value here, and I say enter, look at that. It does not give me the value in degrees. It gives me the size of the angle in radians. Again, you don't know anything about radians, so this has to be degrees. Make sure that it's reasonable. Your answer is reasonable. Does 28 degrees kind of work if this was drawn to scale? Well, let's see, 15 and 17. Yeah, 28 degrees does feel like it's a good answer for A there. You see that? That's 28 degrees. 0.4 degrees? 0.4 degrees is, is almost nothing. Like it's almost, you know, it's like less than half a degree. So 0.4, as you got, there's flags there. So A is about... 28 degrees. Sometimes you'll have to uh, uh, write it to the nearest tenth. Uh, 28, this would be 0 0.1. So 28.1 degrees. Or it might say in the question, round to the nearest degree. So you just say 28. And the same goes for uh, using other trig functions, just second function, whichever trig function you've got set up there. Okay. Okay, uh, finally, determining a length. If you're given an angle and one side only, you can determine a length of, of one of the other two sides of a right triangle. And let me just uh, this over just a bit. So if, if you're given, for example, oh, let me just, there you go, I'll smooth this over a bit. So if you're given this situation, I'll zoom in, uh, where you're given an angle of 40 and an opposite side of 7, if you wanted to find out what the hypotenuse was here, this length right here, you could easily do that. You could use the opposite hypotenuse, that's the sine uh, ratio. So sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. You just plug in all the given values. So that is sine of 40 degrees equals 7 over our missing side hypotenuse. 
And again, you can rearrange this, cross multiply and divide. They switch spots and seven divided by sine 40 gives you the length of the hypotenuse or QP in this, uh, in this diagram, QP, okay? So again, pick the, pick the appropriate trig function. Make sure it's a right triangle. You'll, you'll only be given right triangles in these situations. But it's a, if it's a right triangle, you can use SOHCAHTOA. You can find a missing angle. You can find a missing side. And just remember that if you're given two sides of a triangle, you have options. You can use a trig function to find the third side, like this. Or you can use the good old Pythagorean theorem. Remember that? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You can always use that too. Uh, and if you're finding angles, you can use the trig function, second function, trig function, or you can do the all angles add up to 180, right? So you can do 180 minus 90 minus 40, and you can get the other angle that way as well. So you have options, okay? Um, yeah, just remember that there's going to be some word problems, right, with multiple triangles. Uh, so there'll be some higher level uh, thinking. So if you have to watch any of the uh, individual uh, instructional videos, please go ahead and do that uh, in your studying before the exam. Watch the videos, redo some questions, do some extra questions, um, make sure you have a, a cue sheet made, um, and uh, yeah, so prepare well for this test. Any, any other questions about this chapter that you can think of right now that you might want to ask me during this review? Oh. Okay. All right, there's the review.